Good morning, everybody. And I get everything set up here so that everything looks good. Um, <laughs> change out my glasses here. I don't need to look at the computer all that much. So this way I can see my things. Good morning. It is Thursday, April 17th, and it is now 1030 in the morning. Um, is it Thursday? Yeah, it's Thursday. I don't even know what day it is anymore. So um, I'm here to give a update on multiple projects. And I have tried to record this a couple days ago and the recording just wasn't going through. I did it late in the evening and I think my son was downstairs gaming or something and it was not working out. So I've got to do it all over again, but that's okay. I still had everything around me. <laughs> um, let's get started. So I think the last like multiple project update I gave was on March 9th. And then I did um, on April 1st, I did like a, a quilt tube 28, just on my red and white quilt. Um, update on that is that I haven't done anything since that video. I have been searching all of my local stores looking for a quarter inch bias tape maker. There are none in town. So I ordered one online and put it in my cart because I've got something I'm going to show you later that I need to order some more fabric for. And I wanted to purchase that along with it. Well, needless to say, that has now sold out. So I think I'm going to have to go to a half inch whether I like it or not. Those I can get in all the stores that I went to locally here. Um, so I think I'll do that. Um, it's not what I wanted. I wanted a quarter inch. I could try making it myself. It's a little dangerous. <laughs> Long pieces, lots of folding, lots of ironing, lots of burns. Anyway, I won't go there. But anyway, so that is where that is at right now. And so then soon... Hopefully, I'll get to one of those stores again, and I'll be able to get that, get those, get that thing. So, I am going to show you some of the haul that I got. So, I got this cute little basket at five and five below. That's what it is. So, it's kind of like the dollar store, but everything's five dollars or less. It was only two dollars. I thought it was really cute. Little rainbow baskets, very sturdy. Very, very sturdy basket. That was the only thing I got there. I got something for my door dashing thing, but that's a, a whole different topic. Um, I then went to Hobby Lobby is one of the places I went looking for a bias tape maker. And the only things I bought there were some thread. And I have to be honest with you, this thread, it looks like an Orofil thread. This one actually is Orofil. Where is the one? Oh, the one. so Hobby Lobby's thread is like $8, $7.99 a spool. It looks like Orofil. It's 50 weight. It feels like Orofil. And it works great. I gave it a try with a pink spool. It's what I wanted to do some of my own quilting with. And I just can't stop using it. So I just recently switched out. This is an Orofil one. But look how similar they look. I mean, same look and feel. And according to this particular one, this is Soology as well. This was $3.99, but I think it was also on sale. It had this, um, it was made in Europe, but it said on the thing, on the sign next to it, made in Italy. So... I don't know. I'm really thrilled with it. I got black on purpose and I'm going to show you a project here. I'm going to use it on, but I thought I'd share that I am not finding any issues with the Soology threads. This is the pink one that I had and I've used up almost all of it and I find it just as nice. I haven't had any problems with it. So, and if I ever do, I'll let you know, but I'm going to continue to buy it 
you have fewer colors to choose from. So, I don't know, I bought white or off-white, I think is what's in here now, in the sewing machine now. This one here, it doesn't have a color on it, but it says made in Romania, and this was $4.99, this one, and this is a white, or off-white, whitish, whatever. And that's what's in my sewing machine right now, and I've been using it to sew. Nice little projects. I got these little things I sewed up. So I uh, watched a video and I'll put a link to it. I can't remember the name of it, but I will put it down below. But I watched her um, make these little fabric baskets. So I had purchased some of this fusible mid-weight interfacing. It is a Pellon. And I thought that would help make things a little sturdier mid-weight. I, I think I need to go a little bit thicker because my concern was some of these quilts that I have, I've used this as a double wedding ring one that I've made a basket out of. Um, the quilts can be a little flimsy. And so I wanted something that would kind of add a little stability to it um, with just a fabric liner on it. So I put the pill on, on both pieces before I put them together. But I think this is super cute, super, super cute. There isn't anything on this side. This was just a leftover piece. And I just used the size that I had and just squared it up. I think it was 11 and a half by 14 and a half. And so I think, what does it measure now that it's all made? I wanted to get a measurement and didn't do it. So the bottom is nine inches long and five inches wide. And they are two and a half inches tall. And I think this is a beautiful little basket. So then I used a layer cake. This was a Kath, Kath Holden line. I don't even remember which one it was. It's a couple years old. But I put um, my clips in it and my little macaroon, which has all of my little alphabetes in it because I use those quite a bit. And um, so I've got that made. So I'm going to make a little charm pack one. See how that works out. But I think I need a little bit thicker stabilizer for that kind of thing. All right. So I'm going to make more, but I'm going to try to focus a little bit more on my store, on my shop. Um, I'll show you another thing that I've got here. I'm not sure if I'm going to put it in my shop or not. But I had shown these blocks on my last multi-project video update was these rabbits. This was a Elizabeth Hartman pattern and the link for that pattern is in there. So I made this basket. It's a little tall um, because of the block size, but you know what? I thought it would be kind of cute just like a little wine bottle carrier to take as a housewarming gift or something to somebody's house. So I was going to go get a couple of bottles of wine to use as a prop. Uh, yeah, just as a prop. It's never going to get drunk. But I thought there's a cute little bag. It's cute. And um, once I can find some prop ideas to get pictures for, I put it in my shop. Um, we'll see if we'll get that done. I've been meaning to do that along with that other Easter basket that I had made not that long ago. So... On that tip, oh, the other things I bought, I got these at Hobby Lobby as well. Little ribbons. So I thought I'd make some more baskets. There's a quilt over here that I was thinking I'd make some things with. Maybe I'll make some of those trays or little baskets. Something a little bigger even that I could put an actual... These are wide handles, so I would need something, you know, significant to fill the... Um, you know, it goes along with the size of the basket because I have small ribbon that I can use too, but I don't have the appropriate colors. And I like polka dots. I think polka dots are cute and fun. Um, so what else? I promised some other things in my last video that um, I would show as well. So um, I brought those with me today. I brought my K Facet Raspberry Ice Cream. And this is from the book, 
of the Cotswolds or something like that. I don't know if I have the book even. I'd have to do some searching for it. It's in in there over there with the books. <laughs> but I had showed it in that last video. So if you want to look at that a book up there. But this is the quilt that I made. And I have been doing some hand quilting on it. And I've been working on this for quite a while. Like two years. Something of that nature. But I don't have much further to go. This is kind of like a log cabin thing. You start out with a long, narrow rectangle in the middle. And then you just go around and rows all the way around. And they're all different sizes of strips from like one and a half. I think there isn't even a one inch one maybe in here, but they're up to three inches. So depending on how wide the strip is, depends on how many rows of stitching I put in. I just go around the whole thing um, with that one. So the further you get out to the edge, the more thread you have to use. And I've been using Orafil floss, Aura floss in bright colors and DMC. So, and they're really wide. They're really big. So this one here, and this is a big quote. It's like 70 inches square or 80 inches square, something like that. I will take measurements of it when I get done and get ready to do some binding on it. I'm going to have to get no, maybe not. I think I have some fabric here that I can use as the binding for it. But uh, that was an, that's a fun project. I mean, it's a little tedious. <laughs> and it sits on my dining room table and it hasn't been there for a few days, a uh, couple weeks actually. So um, I thought I would get the back on the dining room table because I do that like while I'm waiting for dinner to cook or um, while I'm cooking something. Something of that nature. So the other thing I promised I'd show was my little strawberries. And I made these out of an old quilt. You know, pink in the back. And these are kind of like 3D. But these are in my shop. There's some in my shop. If there's one that I'm showing that isn't in my shop and you're interested, just send me an email. Um, and here's another one. This one's white on the back. And then there's this one. These are all from the same quilt. So it was an interesting quilt. And I only have like really tiny scraps left. So there's a little bit of fraying on this one right here. Um, this one here is a completely different quilt. But it has little rabbits on it. You can see that in the fabric. No, they're not rabbits. They're little duckies. They're little duckies. That's just white on the back. Here's the one for my red and white quilt. I don't have much of that left. I did make this basket, and that was another reason why I wanted that fusible stabilizer because this is really flimsy. It's holding up really good in here because it's full of my neutral whites and stuff fabric. So that light above here is really bright, but that's just white on the back. And then this one, pink on the back. Oh, that's from that first quilt. And then this one. So that's pink on the back. And then my little birdies. I think one of them is in the shop. But if you're interested in the other one, I can make sure that that gets put out there so that you can purchase it. Um, I haven't been really paying a whole lot of attention to my store, so... I think some things have expired and I didn't notice it. But if anything I show and you're interested in purchasing it, you just let me know. I am always willing to. Uh, this is just in my my orange wooden dough bowl. I had this for so many years. So many years. I'll set that aside. The other thing I promised I'd show and didn't have with me at the time was my crochet. So years ago, I don't even know how many years ago this was, three years ago, something like that. I made these little daisy granny squares. And they are in all different colors. Now I recently tried 
to pick it up again and make some more of these. Wow, it's not going so well. These are much better <laughs> than the ones that I have started making. So a little bit more practice will be involved. But um, let me see if I can grab a design board here to see if that helps. I've got the purple. I still even have some of the threads on here. Um, I've got aqua. And the centers a little different, but I'm not, I don't have a whole lot of faith in myself to be able to make more that look just as nice as these. But um, I think what I'm going to do is just take what I have on the screen. Take what I have and see what I can do with them. Um, I don't even know what th yarn this was anymore. I didn't keep any of the labels or anything, so I can stick with the same color scheme. So I guess I'd have to go. I got it at Hobby Lobby, but so I have a whole bunch of these. See? <laughs> I've got a whole bunch of them and all the threads are hanging off of them. Some of them too so and that's even threads from the the skeins but i may just crochet them together and make myself a, a little uh afghan or something just to throw on the couch to say that hey look what you did one time i don't know that i'll do it again but i have there is um a channel that i have subscribed to yarnery i think it's called and she's really fun to watch. And she has some really cute projects. And so she gives me a little inspiration from time to time when I'm sitting still. This is this is easy to take in the car. Um, my trip, when we do travel in the car, the roads are a little bumpy. So if I'm doing some cross-stitching in those little big, tiny, little 40-count holes, I can't guarantee I'm going to hit the right hole. So this is a good thing to take along for... The road and still have conversation with my driver anyway so let's get down to the actual quilting projects here that i have been working on so i spent some time not doing anything for quite a while since after the last update video and then i just couldn't stop myself i couldn't stop i couldn't stop and i have posted a youtube short of the hometown blocks that i have made and um, I've got them here because I've got an update on that project as well. Um, and then I did another YouTube video. I couldn't get it to post as a short because it shrunk my or widened my video. So you couldn't even see the blocks. So I did it as a regular video. And, but it's a short one. And that is on my laundry basket quilts update. I have not done this week's block yet. Um, I hope to get to that soon. I might be doing two next week, but um, let's start with that because I have a little haul update as well. So here's my project bin on the laundry basket quilts project. And I was running low on blue fabrics, so I bought a three, let's see, is 12 quarter yard cuts. So these are cuts that are from salvage to salvage at our quarter yard. Was it nine inches wide? And then um, there are 12 of them. And so I got this and it was called the Super Stash Blue Bundle. And these were the fabrics that I got. So I got this blue one, this one, and they go and these are the darker ones, dark to light. There's a nice little stripey one. I like that one. And then this one here has got a little bit of a dandelion-y hydrangea, hydrangea, hydrangea flower on it. I really like that. This one here is a really pretty blue. This is my favorite. I like this one out of the whole bunch. And then some really light ones that came in. This is fun. Goes with the little polka dots that I have in the bundle I already am using. This one here it looks more like a little snowflake. And then... There's this little floral. 
and then this other little snowflake in the, in the darker blue. And it came with these two. I probably won't use them in this quilt. There's a batik. I have made batik quilt before. And again, that would be have to be something I have to show you on another video because I do have a pineapple quilt that I made with really bright colors on a dark navy background, black background. Is it black? Yeah, it was black. Black with very bright color um, pineapples. And then this one came out with it. So maybe one day I'll show you that. Right now it's been sitting on the table because it needs a... I don't know if it's the black fabric that I used. I think it was a Kona. But it's got all the little... What do you call it? The little, it's pilling for whatever reason. I don't know. It's been washed quite a bit and used quite a bit. So, And my pile of blocks... So I am making a heart block for each one of these, the weekly block. So this was last week's. Those are the fabrics that I chose for that. Get some close-up views of these. Here's the little one for the week before. So my fabric choices are great for each block. However, how they're going to mix and match together is a whole other thing because they're a little bit different than the others. Let me see where that thing go. Pull this back out. Because <clears throat> I don't know how they're all going to work together. But there's that block. And then this one. See, like this one and the previous one. I don't know how well they're going to all go together, but... We'll work that out when the time comes when we get to that end that end of the project. I'll have to start putting some of them on the wall and making some choices, I think. I'm going to have to do it the Pat Sloan way. When you get so far along in a project, <laughs> you got to put it on the wall and make some fabric choices. Um, let's see here. This one here. This is a fun, that's a fun block. And then this one. I'm enjoying this project. I really am. I am. Oh, this is fun too. That's a fun block right there. Can you tell what the background fabric is? It's a tiny dot. It's a tiny, tiny dot. Yeah, see, there. Teeny, tiny little dot. This is fun. I love the colors of these. this blue. I have not yet done the applique stitching around the outside edge of each of these hearts, but this is one of the bonus blocks. I guess our next one is um, Mother's Day. So I'm looking forward to that. Same. And this one here, whole different choice of fabrics. Didn't we have one like this one already? Yeah, the last one. This is the last one we did. Very similar. Very similar. Okay. And then this one. I think I had to do this one twice. <laughs> I don't think my little outside stars turned out as nice as they are on this one. <laughs> then there's that block. I used plaid background on that one. I was going to order another fat quarter of neutrals, but I've got plenty to work with for now. So I'm not going gonna, gonna to save that money for now. But here is this floral one, applique. This was the first bonus block. I still have to do the applique around the outside edge and around all of these hearts too. So that's going to be a big project. And then this one here. I didn't have any enough of this fabric to put on the heart. So I just used a different fabric for that. And then this one. 
It's got the little dove fabric on there. Oh, on the outside end. You can see it better over here. Wait, where's my hand gotta go? Here, <laughs> these little doves, little birds. They're so cute. They're so cute. And two more. This is my favorite heart. I like how I fussy cut the little rose, the, the flower in there. And this was the first one that we did. And there we go. So I think we're on 16 this week. So looking forward to getting that done. Getting that we this week's block done, which I'll probably do with next week. So don't be surprised. And I hate to say this because I've said it before and I still don't follow through. Um, but I'd like to get this into some sort of routine with like my morning routine. I get up, at, you know, between two and five every morning and I spend time sewing every morning and maybe I'll get in my jammies and sew a block with you online. I don't know. I may change my mind not to go live in my jammies, but so let's see here. We're going to talk about hometown update is next. Um, actually, I'm going to do the mercantile quilt seeds. Oh, this bundle right here. Spoiler alert. This was the Lori Holt um, Fat Quarter Friends. These were the fabrics that came this week. I finally paid my bill. I asked her to cancel my subscriptions. In an email, I never got a response. So, um, but I've been getting invoices regularly. So, I finally got a little bit of money and spent it to get it get it paid for. These are all like greens. This one here is green and blue, and it's so pretty. I'm so glad I was able to get it, but I don't want to cancel the subscription. This is the brown neutral. With that one, this one here is so St. Patrick's. I love this. <laughs> I love that fabric. And then this pretty little green floral. And this one here is so ditzy cute. Ditzy green floral. This plaid is fun. And then another little ditzy, not so ditzy floral like that. And this one, I've never seen this one before. I don't even know which one this one came with, but I really like that. That's kind of fun. And then this one here, I've got lots of this stuff. So that came this week. And then the other thing that came this week was the next Mercantile Quilt Seeds, which is the scissors and buttons. So I'm looking forward to making that. It came with all the fabrics. I'm looking forward to getting that one done. I do, let's put this back up here. Oops, I dropped that on the floor. Okay. So this other one that I'm working on is the first one. I don't believe I missed any of those, but this is the Tea and Notions. And I, there's the pattern and the fabrics. And I did the thimble and the seam ripper. <laughs> Got that part done. And I did the quilt block. I love it. Love that block. So I still have to do the teacup, the bobbin, and the measuring tape. And then the border. So I'll probably get work on this one here pretty soon. We'll see. And then I went to town with um, hometown. So I went ahead and did a total of all of the house blocks that had to be made, divide by the number of piece blocks that had to be made. You can watch the video to see all of these. These are all fun. So I made 21 of them. And that goes along with um, 
up to the fire. Where is my to the fireworks block house? So and now twenty two through forty will be done with the the beehive sheep house cherry house tea house and strawberry house. So I'm not sure when I will touch this again, but I did get this all fused down for the fireworks house. The only house that I have actually stitched all my applique down is the first one. I still have to do that for all the rest of them. So quick review. Here's my first house. What's the flag house? The flag house. And then we have the topiary house. And then we have the pineapple house. Next up is the sunflower house. I like the pink house. I like pink, 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 pink. And the bird house. I love this bird. Love the bird. The tulip house. I hope to get this done before the end of the year. So I'd like to get one house done a month, but we'll see if I actually can make that happen because right now there is a project I'm going to show you that uh, two of them that I want to get finished up. So it those are going to take a higher priority um, to this one. This one can wait. I'm in no hurry for that one. And then all of the blocks that I just did. I had four or five of them done. So the first one, second one. I had four or five of these already done with my last big update, but uh, I did did through 21. So now when I do my next house, I'll do the assigned blocks with that house and get that done as a grouping. So that way I'm, when I finish, I'll be done with everything. This block, and this one is so fun to do her piecing method on this because working at Ditta Sitars and, and with Lori's, they're, ways of doing things are so different and I appreciate that. And so I've learned like which method works best for me. Like with my red and white one, I showed you my favorite method for doing hourglass blocks. And it's kind of like, you know, I, 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 whatever works best for me to get the, the best piecing for my block. And so like with Lori's method of doing this little tulip corners or these little corners, I really enjoy that method. I do, I do, I do. Oh, is it that one or this one? Yeah, I can't remember which block it was, but there's a, it was the first one, I believe. This method, the way she does that. I don't know. Yeah, this one here. It's the same block, just different fabrics. Um, pinwheels. I'm not a, pinwheels are not my favorite, but I love her star blocks. Those are so fun. And then this one. So those are all done. And so I feel like I've got quite a bit accomplished with this project. I'm very excited about that. Um, oh, that already fell on the floor. Okay. So we'll set this one aside. So that was the hometown and the Mercantile Quilt Seeds updates. And then um, I also worked on my yellow and white quilt, basket quilt. All right, so let me pull this out. This is all the white fabric that I have left. And this is a Bella solid, but this is all I have left of it. So. Whatever I use up of that, I've got some already, you know, cut out and stuff that I can use. But when this runs out, I'm done. I got to quit with this quilt and put the blocks together. 
So this is the blocks. Ooh, that looks awfully bright. <laughs> it's not as it is bright, but it's not that bright. <laughs> so and I've got sashing on all of them. So all I have to do is just throw them together. Um, that's got to go that way. My logo quilt on the wall right there. That's what this is after. But I'm not going to do them on point like that. Or, And I was even, because some of the blocks in there are like done crooked and in the wrong way and mispieced. And I was going to replicate that with this quilt. And I'm not so sure that I'm going to do that. Oh, I think I'm just going to do it this way. All my blocks are going to just go in an angle. And so I've got 20 of these blocks now. I've got a lot of the yellow fabric left over. So I'm going to find a backing. And I don't know if I'll use the same yellow for the border. But I've got a lot of these now. Lots of them, and I'm very happy with that. So this one here is basically nearly done just because of the fact that I don't have very much of this left. So I kind of want to get this one done and free up this project box for another project because, you know, June and July are Fat Quarter Shops Mystery Halloween and Mystery Christmas projects and I, I always want to get involved in those so um, I did pull out one from a few years ago and I already started working on that one earlier this year so I'm going to pull that out and work on that at the same time and I'll give you that update when I do that so the other thing I wanted to discuss is like so early in April we had so much snow and it was so, so depressing. So, so, so depressing. And I just wanted springs to come so bad. The sun to shine. I mean, it was like two weeks without sun. So I needed a project that got me all inspired for spring. So I did a couple of things. The first thing I did was I took, and I'll grab this pattern over here. I wanted something a little floral, but yet I didn't want anything like super nice. <laughs> so I made this and it's just on a on a black and white floral background. I think it goes this way because the flowers are kind of in an order. But I wanted something very springy, very cute, pops of color. And this is from the Trendy Table 2 book by Heather Peterson, Anka's Treasures. And it is this one right here. So I just pulled out the, the templates to make the flower. And that's why I went to Hobby Lobby because I needed some black thread. So what I'm going to do is do just outline, like scribbly looking. I don't know what do they call it in black. Just to kind of accent it and quilt it that way. So... I don't know. I haven't had the ball, the balls. <laughs> I'm not brave enough. <laughs> what I say? You have to be careful what you say here, girl. Um, I don't want to offend anybody. <laughs> I didn't have the courage <laughs> to do that yet. So that's why I'm using like some fabric. This is all um, Joanne and um, Walmart fabric that I have used on this. Not like that. That's not good fabric because I really like those polka dots. <laughs> and I did use, um, it is a Waverly fabric that's in the lining of this as well. This aqua polka dot is so adorable. So cute. I love it. And it's actually sturdy enough to use as a, you know, the, the fabric, the feel of it. Perfect for this Um for this project. <clears throat> so I don't want to knock it because I really like the fabrics. Otherwise I wouldn't buy them, right? So that one there, I want to get quilted. And again, that's from the Trendy Table 2 book from Uncle's Treasures, Heather Peterson. And I love Heather Peterson, as you will see. Um, the other project that I worked on to help liven up my little springtime 
need <laughs> was, and I had talked about this before, I had purchased the fruit salad book. It's a fig tree and co thing. And the Fat Quarter Shop was doing a like trunk show of the things that she did the year before in 2023. And she had done the fruit medley um, <clears throat> runner. And so I pulled that pattern or that finishing pattern and then you just follow the instructions to make the fruit from the book and make a table runner so i went to town on this i am using a background it is called blossom by christopher thompson it's a white on white with a teeny tiny little blossom on it so yeah using that and then for the sashing, I'm using a similar one. Um, it's a different, it's a blue and white or an aqua and white, but this is the Lori Holt blue and white. It is so hard to see it. It's so hard to see it. My lighting is so bad. Um, and these are the strips that I need to do that with, but I'm not sure if that helps you to see it at all. It's a blue and white little design. It looks like a three-leaf clover. Um, and then I pulled out, I had gotten the fruit salad. Is it fruit salad? Fruit cocktail. Fruit cocktail fat quarter bundle. And then I went into my bins and I pulled out some other like greens. So I had some more mixing and matching. But again, this is a Waverly. I love polka dots. And this is a beautiful green. I went into my Christmas bin and pulled out a fig tree green from there out of the Christmas bundle that was in there. I think it was a stitch bundle. I also went into um, my orangey, peachy stash and pulled out some of these to use. I thought they would go well with the project. These are Moda fabrics, but I'm not sure who the designer was on these. And I'm not even going to try to guess because I'll get it wrong and I don't want to get it wrong. So I'm also using a Lori Holt brown fabric for the stems of the fruit. And so these are the fabrics that came in the fruit cocktail. So there's a cherry, blue cherry and a blue floral. I love this blue. This summertime blue is like what... Pat Sloan calls it. I tell you, that blue just warms my soul. I love it. There is an orange with a blue center. There is a little red or tomato-y red fabric. I pulled this from my stash thinking this might work for something. It is the same tomato-y red in a diagonal stripe. Um, there's this tomato-y red floral and like a grape bunch, cherries, raspberries, blackberries, whatever that fruit is. Oh, it's so cute. This yellow cherries. Oh, I love it. Love it. This light yellow little floral bundle. Um, let's see. I pulled this solid green out. It's a Kona. I had a Kona Fat Quarter, bright colored green. It goes with all the other greens in here. There was a stripe in the Fat Quarter bundle that I got with Fruit Cocktail. I pulled this one out of my stash, thinking this might go with. It's a very good green. Matches very well with it. And this came with the Christmas uh, fig tree fabric. It's pretty green. So I've got a mix and match of, of fabrics and colors. There's, I pulled this out of the Christmas bundle, that floral, and I've used this in leaves. And then there's this one here that came with the fat quarter bundle that I had purchased. So here is block one. I got a blueberry block. I changed up some of the colors for the diamonds um, that go on these blocks as part of the 
um, pattern from the Fat Quarter Shop. And I'll put a link below where you can find that because it is a free pattern. You just have to purchase the book. And I don't think it was that expensive. It was in the 20s, I believe, 20 some dollars. Here is a lemon block. I use that uh, green polka dot. And here's a cherries block. And that's the next block I have to make. There's two cherries in this one. Two cherry blocks, I should say. And here's a daisy block. And this project so helped me get out of my no sun mode. <laughs> yeah, it really helped. Every morning I made a block or started a block or starched a pat fabric to go with the block. You know, I was working on it for days in a row. I haven't touched it for a few days now. But And this is the uh, pear block, the pineapple block and the pear block. So I still have two well, I have more than two blocks to go where is the here it is so I still have a cherry a lemon an apple another daisy block and a orange block left to do and um, I will put the link to this. this is my black and white version but that's it's really long too from what I can remember 15 and a half inches wide by 80 and a half inches long which I think is longer than my table I think my table is like 70 inches long with the sleeve in the middle the leaf in the middle all right so that's that project and I would like to get this finished and put on my table pretty quickly so I will work on this one too, but this next one I'm going to show you is the one that I'm going to be working on um, just to get the blocks finished so that way I can determine the additional fabrics that I need to purchase because I need more fabrics for that one. These got to go in there too. Kind of keep my projects together here. I want to empty out some of these bins. I've got a very tall stack. <laughs> And some of them I'm going to get to. There's a Christmas one in there I'm going to get to when we do that Christmas mystery with um, that quarter shop. Just to make sure they haven't forgotten anything before I move on to the last update. And I think that's it. So we're going to talk about this. And I don't know how often I've even talked about this, this quilt. But I've been um, doing the press flowers so long. Um, I got the finishing pattern. I purchased that I this last week. And block 12 I need to do. Block 11 I need to do. So I got two blocks and the finishing. And so I'm going to need some more fabrics for this. I think I'm just going to need the background fabric because I don't have very much of that left. But I've got all the other patterns. I was getting the sew sampler box for a while. And then I had to stop it. And then I was just buying the patterns every month. Now I did re-sign up for the Soul Sampler box starting with this month. And the next pattern is a basket pattern. And I am really thrilled to do that one. I can't wait to get that one. I don't know what fabric line I'm going to use or anything like that yet. But I think you're supposed to use Shoreline. And you can get a kit um, purchase ahead of time with the back. And backing separately, but um, I don't know that I can afford that unless I want to do it on a payment plan. But I'd like to see if I have something that would work with it. Maybe cave. I don't know. I I'd like to try to use something, and maybe I'll even use Lori Holt because all of the uh, Fat Quarter Friends stuff. So here are my blocks for this. And I have been using Heather Peterson's line, Indigo Garden. And I had a half yard bundle of this fabric and didn't know what I was going to make with it. But I had to have it. I just had to have it. So I've got the teals. Got it separated by that. So, But um, this, I can probably just use up these pieces and make a backing. Um, it's going to be a big quilt, isn't it? I don't remember how big it was supposed to turn out. 59 and a half by 76 and a half. So it is a very big quilt. So I need like the center pieces 
and fabric too because um, I think these go on point and I think there's the setting triangles that go on the outside of this to make it go on point and then you put the flip in so corners on the ends and they meet in the middle those additional little squares so um, I might need a different fabric for that I don't know I have to put it on the wall I'm gonna I have to put these on the wall right now to determine what fabrics I'm going to use for box 10, 11, or 11 and 12, and then we'll go from there. So this is the first block, and this is my second block using that Indigo Garden line. I did put some of this in my cart, like five or six yards of this, because I'm thinking I wanted to use that green floral as the backing. I don't know yet, but that was my initial thought. <laughs> and then here is block three. Don't remember the names of these. I'd have to pull them all out of my little thing here. But um, And then I use the teal on this block. And this one here I know is the rose block. This is the only one that I use this fuchsia fabric in, and I think I'm going to use that again in the next ones. So there wasn't many greens with this, so I think I had like three blocks each using the different. And I may have to rearrange the blocks in the order so they don't have like matching greens next to each other or oranges or whatever. But I will play with that here in a moment because that's the next one I'm going to work on probably tomorrow because I have an appointment at one o'clock today that I have to get to and then I'm going to go to work for a while. There's that one and then this one and then I believe this one was the marigold. Don't quote me on that. And then this was block 11 or 10. This was the last one I just did. So, so yeah, I'd like to get this finished up. The background fabric that I am using is Lori Holt. It's her shabby. And I don't know that you can see that, but there is like striations in it. It's her white on white shabby. It's a cloud, I believe they call it. But, and um, I'm not sure that I have enough of this to finish off those blocks so that they are no longer on point. But there are some more of these beautiful fabrics. I've got a lot of this fabric left. Maybe I'll do those baskets with this. because There's plenty left over. I just might do that. Two years of so longs with the so, so sampler box with the same fabric. I just have to find a different background. This one, this one. I was thinking orange for the backing of this quilt too. I don't know, I'm torn, so torn. <laughs> so torn. I did pull out this blue, which is thatched one and I got quite a bit of this, so. Not sure what to do with that. I was thinking I'd use it as a background. Maybe I'll use that as the background for the other project that the, the basket one that's coming out. Can you see the blues on there? Yeah, you can. That's really pretty. That's really pretty. I don't know that you can see this one so well, but the ones that had the flowers on it. Hmm. <laughs> I may have to rethink that whole idea. <laughs> so I'm going to leave this one out because this one here is going to be, I'm going to work on this one next. I have found that I cannot sew in the evenings. I make way too many mistakes. After I've been busy all day and everything, it's just not something I can do. So I have to leave that for my daytime stuff. So I will, um, be working on that over the next few days to try to get that done. I don't know when I'll get to this. This is not a high priority. But the press flowers and the fruit medley project, I'm going to try to get these finished over the next couple of weeks. 
I'm going to make some more baskets using my vintage quilts. Um, and the linings will be fabrics from my stash. I'm going to test out a charm square basket. I'm using these Liberty fabrics. These are Riley Blake Liberties. I'm going to use these as my, this is the outside of the basket and this will be my lining. Um, so I'm going to test that out using this fusible. So I'm thinking this might be best with smaller projects rather than for the big ones. I'm going to find a product that's a little bit heavier weight. I don't, I didn't really want fusible fleece because I don't want to add any additional thickness to my vintage quilt baskets, but I may have to go that route just to get the right stability. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you do, please like and subscribe. I've added a few new subscribers. Thank you for joining. I'm so excited. So um, keep, keep posting, keep watching. I may do some little short videos to uh, progress on some blocks. I might do that here real soon when I finish up all 12 blocks of the pressed flowers one. And um, I'll probably even post an update on the fruit medley as well as in this in a small um, video, short video. And I might just pop in and do a live and you can just sew along with me in some of my projects if you're working on the same ones and want to finish them up as well or just just to sew day so anyway you guys thanks for joining the threads all over me so you guys have a fabulous rest of your day i hope the sun comes out i don't want to work in the rain today so i will uh catch up with you guys real soon okay thanks for watching have a great day bye now